Hi, welcome. Thank you for tuning into this week's edition of How I Choose to Live My Life. My name is Leslie Donaldson and this is my uh, personal video series. Instead of writing a book, I'm just going to tell a bit of a, a story and uh, uh, through a video series. And it's going to be an ongoing video series. And uh, right now what we're doing is um, I'm just giving you a little bit of a background of who I am, where we've lived and what we've been doing that led us up to the life that we have uh, now, currently. Um, so if you haven't been following along and you'd like to follow along, you can please go to um, my YouTube channel uh, that uh, Ken and I share with uh, ITR Polygraph. So YouTube, ITR Polygraph, it has all the videos there. and. Um, uh, I would like to encourage you to maybe um, maybe watch some of them because some of them are really about sharing my story in order to help other people to be encouraged and 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 as we go through today's episode, what I'm saying will really make a little bit more sense. Um, so when we left off last week, um, we had successfully sold our store. It was called Donaldson's Country Market. It was a grocery store, liquor store, bakery, post office and um, that was on the main floor and then we lived above it and we did that store for 10 years and su successfully sold it um, after having four children as well. Our son Alexander, our daughter Paige and our twin daughters Olivia and Juliet. Um, and uh, they were two, the twins were two when we sold the store. So when we sold our store that was up north in the town of Fawcett, Alberta, we moved back to St. Albert, Alberta. We wanted to be closer to my mom and dad and um, just a little bit more closer to our families and, and so forth. So we did that. We moved back to St. Albert. We bought a beautiful little house. and um, But we had been self-employed and we had been running a grocery store and doing all this stuff and Ken was also um, a volunteer firefighter as well and um, I maybe didn't touch on that before but um, he he was with the um, Westlock volunteer fire department and um, he was the he did that out in the town of Fawcett and so that was incredibly amazing to do that as well and so we had lived such a different life that when we came back to St. Albert, we, we wanted to try and do that same thing, but really couldn't find that way, you know? Um, and so we took a retreat. What are we gonna do? Are we gonna work for somebody else? Are we gonna work for ourselves? And the thing is, we had been selling a product. We had been um, doing that. So we had already known what it's like to sell products and things like that, but be in competition with um, places like Walmart and um, uh, Costco and Safeway and um, just all the other stores that people can go and shop in and everything. It was very hard at that time. And even now, in this day and age, it's even harder. And so when we were thinking of, when we had sold our store and we have four children at home, what are we going to do? How are we going to live? And we were entrepreneurs. We wanted to work and live for ourselves and be together. And it was a very different lifestyle. It's not what people are, are um, doing that much today, really. They're not. Um, I don't know many of my friends that, that are doing what we're doing. Um, but that's okay. We have been, you know, we've been doing things a little bit differently. And so my parents were so gracious. They looked after all of our four children and um, Ken and I decided to go to Banff, Alberta, and we were going to have a, a retreat. And we were going to go there for a few days and think about it. What do we want to do? We wanted to maybe offer a service and offer a service that nobody else was doing, but also a service that we could take and do something with. And we didn't really know what that was. Then one day we were, while we were um, in Bath, Ken and I, we were at our hotel and we were watching TV 
and um, there was a polygraph examiner on TV and we both literally had the same idea at the same time really of wow why don't we why don't we create a business of polygraph why doesn't Ken be a polygraph examiner I don't know another polygraph examiner this is incredible service and so we started researching it and everything and that is not an easy feat um, to be a polygraph examiner in Canada there was only one way if you were with the uh, Canadian Police uh, Polygraph Association and that is through the Canadian Police Force and if you are not a police officer in Canada you could not get that training so it really looked like our dream was 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 not going to go anywhere but that's not true that's not how it ended in fact um, we continued to pursue what we wanted to do. We really felt led that this is what we wanted to do. We wanted to offer this amazing service and learn this science. And so Ken uh, researched and researched and researched and um, he found a, a school in Largo, Florida called the Academy of Polygraph Science. And um, he went to that school and uh, he was accepted there. Uh, they have different criteria than uh, Canada and he met the criteria for the United States and um, I do want to give a, a huge shout out to um, somebody who is very pivotal for Ken with who gave him an amazing letter of recommendation for this position of much high security uh, to become a certified polygraph examiner. Actually, his proper title is a certified forensic psychophysiologist. And the person that gave him an incredible letter of recommendation was Dave Chatters. And uh, he was a member of Parliament for Canada, and I really want to give a shout out to uh, Dave Chatters. He was incredible. He was uh, a man of, uh, of high integrity, and we um, thank him, and we miss him very much. Uh, he and his uh, beloved wife, Effie, and uh, we, um, we miss them, and they were, um, they were very good in our community. We knew them and met them and, and uh, grew to... Uh, spend some time with them uh, on a personal level. My, my father was all about that when he said, you know, when we were opening the store that uh, it's important to know your government officials. But Dave Chatters was more than just our government official. He was a friend of ours and uh, he and Evie are very missed. And uh, I do want to give a shout out to uh, Gary Chatters, um, their son, that uh, we wanted to thank you. that. Um, your dad did a really great thing for Ken and his career, and we will never forget that. So I thank him very much. But anyways, the school had said that that was one of the most prestigious letters he'd ever, they had ever received for one of their students going to school. So that's why I give a huge shout out to that because it really meant a lot and it re really meant a lot to Ken and the school and for his career. And so having said that, Ken went to uh, school, but it was hard for me. Oh my gosh, I, he had left when um, the twins were two years old. He left in the middle of winter. Um, I had, we also had the other two children and they needed to go to school. And it was from March, no, from January to March in, in Alberta winter. No, that's not okay, and he's in Florida having a nice time. Yes, he's going to school and everything, but he comes back with a suntan, right? And I'm and then asking me if I've been shoveling, and no, I haven't been shoveling. So anyways, it we've come to this place where this is all great, and we have now created a new life and, and a new direction and everything, but we've also cho chosen a service that nobody else was doing like this in Canada. It was, we were brand new and nobody else was doing it. And so we struggled with the issue that we were so brand new that how were we going to market this? Well, I'll tell you, one of the ways that we marketed it was we created a, um, a reality TV documentary series. And um, at the time, 
before before it became the lie detective which 13 episodes are on our uh, YouTube channel before it was that Ken and I sat down and wrote a reality show called the traveling polygraph show and it's something that we are choosing now to do and it's amazing that actually 17 years later this is now going to be what we're doing and we're going to be putting that in but we were incre incredibly creative at that time we knew that the way that we needed to properly promote polygraph and what we do and how we can help our province and our and and our country with the science of polygraph was to create a um a show for tv that was a, a an excellent documentary and in the end we were fortunate very very fortunate to work with um ava and epo and all of those credits are all on there please check it out because they're incredible with real girls media and uh, they did a great job and we were blessed to be in that series and now we're making a new series and we have um actually uh, a whole new um, adventure coming up in the following months, so uh, please tune in. But there comes a time too when there's uh, a bit of uh, some, some things that don't go quite right with my mom. But we'll talk about that another time. What I'd like to do is just end with this. And um, I'm not sure if anybody's, if you've uh, seen this book before, but it's called uh, Jesus Calling. Many, many people that I know, many women, we spent a lot of time in Bible study, many people are going to recognize this book. And the way this book um, reads is if Jesus is speaking to you. So please understand that when I'm reading it, that that's the way it's supposed to be read. So today is May 7th, and here's what it says today. And I opened it up. And the card was literally in May 7th today. So I take it as a sign. I'm going to read this one today. It says, If you learn to trust me, really trust me, with your whole being, then nothing can separate you from my peace. Everything you endure can be put to good use by allowing it to train you in trusting me. This is how you foil the works of evil, growing in grace through the very adversity that was meant to harm you. Joseph was a prime example of this divine reversal, declaring to his brothers, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. Do not fear what this day or any day may bring your way. Concentrate on trusting me and on doing what needs to be done. Relax in my sovereignty, Rem remembering that I go before you as well as with you in each into each day fear no evil for I can bring good out of every situation you will encounter you can find this in Genesis 50 verse 20 and also in Psalms 23 4 that's really a lot to think about but that really is how it is I've been talking about and making a series that talks about highs and lows, ups and downs, greatness and then trials and tribulations. But in all of that, I am saying God is good. And until next time, we'll pick it up then. Ciao.